Macaulay Conkin in his darkest role yet. Join him this Christmas in Home Alone 6, where a grown ass man will kill innocent bystanders. Three, two, one. Welcome to the Final Podcast. I'm your host, the Tenth Man, Beef King Salad, and today I'm joined with my best friend, that random guy. How are you, sir? I'm very good. That always makes that warms my heart. You're also in in return, my best friend. Um, cool. Yeah, it's it's a it's a bit of a it's weird. Lower Hut. I just came from Lower Hut, and it's like mega hot there. And in Chudan Park, it's freezing. So talking of um, mega hot, like I spent mm. all morning since when I got up playing like high activity vr games you have no idea what mega hot is until you're literally in your underpants in the middle of the room with a headset on like swinging your arms around like a crazy person <laughs> yeah, that sounds like that sounds like perfection yeah um uh one of them was uh creed vr right yeah so it's, it's is, the is it like vr punch out it's the movie tie-in to the Creed movie that's a reboot of the Rocky series, obviously. For people who don't know, that's that's the truth. Obviously, we <laughs> know, but that's why I said obviously. Um, <laughs> well, it, 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 is, it, is, it is a sequel to Rocky Balboa. Yeah, because he's in it. He becomes his trainer. Yeah, and, and, and the timeline of what happened up until the end of Rocky Balboa still happened. So it's, it's more of a spin-off. It's an, a, a, Imagine Torchwood, but it was season three the whole time. Yeah. One, two, and four didn't happen. That'd be <laughs> not yes, four. Never, never four. four. Oh my god! I remember. Ah oh man, season four was so bad. So as a as a uh, five second review, buy the game <laughs> if you can. If you can't buy the game, that's all I have to say. <laughs> that's all you have to say. You have to that's buy it. That's all you need to know. Yeah, you just need to buy the game. Yeah, hundred um, percent. Hopefully you can't hear that plane flying over. Oh, we, we're going to have massive amounts of background noise. It's just going to happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. At the end of this, we're going to have to do a moment of silence. And uh, not for our fallen brothers, though. It can be. It can be for our fallen brothers and sisters, but mostly so we can uh, get rid of that noise. Remember so what kids, is on the... <laughs> remember, kids, thousands of people suffer from friend zoning every year. Mm. You can do your bit by donating to Friend Zone USA. Or just slung some dick. <laughs> or whatever. The opposite of dick. Mm, um, mm. So this episode is head cannon. Anything that um, is sitting in the back of your mind that uh, helps you, you know, with, with what what's cannon inside your mind that may not be explained in the actual medium. <laughs> um, I would like to start off by saying that because Harry Potter is a Horcrux, the Dursleys were probably nice people until he moved in. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> whoa your mind is blown because you're just like watching the yeah, peaks cause... on the fucking thing and you're just like <laughs> down to the bottom and back up again uh, 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 <laughs> it's not uh, not often that you're speechless <laughs> this is true that that makes so much sense because um as you were re-watching the series when they got that one horcrux the three of them exploded yeah, they became like, like horrible fucks to each other. Yeah, and yeah. To that really weird sequence, which I remember reading the or seeing the. Re- I always say reading. We don't read anymore. It's all video based shit. Um, I remember <laughs> hey. watching a video regarding uh, the scene where Daniel Radcliffe and Emma Watson made out, and they were like, "So how was that, Harry?" And he was like, oh, "She's really aggressive, and it scared me." <laughs> But that whole sequence of like Ron walking in and seeing them making out, and it's, it, when you rewatch it, it's like, wow, that would be fucked up from his point of view. That'd be like, yeah. oh, but they were, they were, they were like, they were. It wasn't actually them. No, it was like it his was like a, his nasty like it was trying to take him over. But it was just yeah. that moment of like you'd be like, oh guys, I'm gonna go like go pick mushrooms so we don't starve to death, and then you come back and your friends are making out, and you're like. <laughs> Cool, I couldn't even have this one. Chosen one, <laughs> ma- most famous wizard in the world next to Dumbledore. Yeah, I, I hate movie Ron, um, and it's not because of Rupert Grint. Rupert Grint is fantastic as Ron Weasley, but they make him an idiot, and he isn't in the books. Exactly. Yeah, he's he can be bumbling at times, but he is actually not an idiot. Not to mention the fact that I think the person they picked to play Hermione was like 
now I can say it, but it, I, she does. She falls within that standard cut and paste, like prettiest child at audition. Where if you go through the description of her in the novels, she is not what they portrayed on screen. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, but apparently though, because um, um, I've strangely enough watched all the behind the scenes stuff on the collector's Blu-ray box set, which I highly suggest to people. <laughs> We're not affiliated with Amazon or anything, um, but. She actually is, is the kid that nailed the audition. Oh, yeah, 100%. You'd have to yeah, be. Yeah, so he walked like, in and just destroyed it. And they were like, oh, okay. And looking over the audition tapes, she was the strongest actor. And you go back at watch one, and she definitely was, which is weird because uh, Daniel Radcliffe was in the previous year in um, David Copperfield, the not the magician. <laughs> yeah, not the magician. Uh, not the magician. The Charles Dickens tale. Sorry, people don't read anymore. I have to explain that. Yeah, uh, in the Charles Dickens book, David Copperfield, um, and he's in that, and he was fantastic. So it's, it, I think it's maybe because he's working with CGI, and even adults struggle with that because it's not there. Yeah. Like, um, have you seen the behind the scenes of the Hobbit where um, Sir Ian McKellen starts crying? Yeah, I have seen that. And That's also, horrible. Yeah, because um, it's actually interesting. Um. Before. They should have just shot it like they did Lord of the Rings. It, would, it looked more realistic, and it came out more than 10 years ago. The issue with The Hobbit was the time frame. And yeah, they didn't have three years. Peter Jackson's commitment wasn't what he wanted to do. He would, didn't mm. want to go in there being what he did in Lord of the Rings again, because it almost borderline yeah. killed him. <laughs> and the studio had po- supposed to have set everything up. And then they were like, cool, so we're going to give you the same time frame when we want everything released. Um, but we've fired everybody, so if you could just deal with it. <laughs> yeah, I, I really wish they had gone ahead when Del Toro was connected, because Del Toro um, is very practical driven, and we would have had The Lord of the Rings again, but just two movies and good, like good prequels, because it suffered definitely from Star Wars Itis, but I've taken us on too far of a tangent. Let's go back to Head <laughs> No, and, I was yes. I, I was going to add to that tangent and said that the female lead, which I can't remember her name because she's not on the book, no, um, yeah, the female a, elf was literally, the actress addition. said, I do not want to be in this movie if I'm in a love triangle. And they were like, cool, so we're just going to shoehorn yeah. that love triangle in there, these kids yeah. books. <laughs> it sucks because the elves don't speak elvish. Yeah, which makes no sense. Because Viggo Mortensen... And Liv Tyler learned Elvish so that their relationship actually worked on screen. Yeah. And as a result, their relationship works on screen. But these two elves talking to Elf Daddy are speaking in English? Why? They wouldn't be speaking in man tongue because elves are upper class. They would be speaking in Elvish. Somehow, though, when Hugo Weaving was on screen, he spoke in Elvish. <laughs> two bloody old figwit. Yeah. He spoke too big with in Elvish, and I'm like, then why can't they do this? And it's because the actress was just chucked in. She, her character wasn't meant to be in the movie. She doesn't the, exist she, anywhere. Yeah, exactly. She's not meant to be in the film. She was just chucked in, and it's so frustrating because they didn't need it. If they had just not done a trilogy and done the two movies and just split the book in half, that would have been significantly better because the films would have been punchier and they would have got things done. In saying that, though, I think it works as a six movie set. I've wa- I especially with the uncut versions, the extended editions. Um, recently, I watched all six extended editions Jesus. of the films in chronological order, and I think they work. I think the 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 Hobbits don't create the issue that Lucas's Star Wars prequels do, where it fucks up the original trilogy. Yeah, because they don't. They complement the original trilogy, which is what you should be doing, and they weren't doing like. They weren't doing excessive nods. I think the only two nods you can have, really, are that Bilbo's in it and Legolas is in it. And Legolas can be in it. I know he's not in it in the book, but he can be in it because that guy, the king, Thirandriel, is actually his dad. Yeah. I, so I that com- worked. I completely agree. Um, yeah. The only downside is, is that they wanted... It's it's not done on art anymore. Yeah. If you want art, yeah. look at foreign film. Um, because yeah, absolutely. Because they just put more effort in. What they wanted was money. Mm. and that's what they got they got money because everyone was like lord of the rings was really good let's go see them and then you get to the second movie and it's like let's not see the third one and then the third one comes out and because people have sh- no short-term memory because of <laughs> sugar um yeah. they can't remember and so they just instantly went back and 
still still got it um the other thing that i was going to point out earlier was when you're talking about one of the best actors of our time yeah. crying about being surrounded completely by green screens and peter being yeah. just like i can't fucking do anything about it bro like this is the this is the limitations the studio gave me i want all of us to have jobs tomorrow yeah um was watching all of the behind the scenes of game of thrones where they're like with interacting with the green screen especially with the um that was back to dobby again where like the dragons were uh, uh tennis like, balls a uh, tennis balls on sticks and yeah. the um what was the other creepy one? Oh, is there some dude in a suit with like puppet arms like hugging amelia clark and it's just like yeah that'd be real <laughs> awkward in real life just be like, yeah no nah, uh, acting alongside that it, it would suck like <sighs> practical holds up if you look at the hobbit it's already dated the last yeah. one came out when yeah. 2013 yeah it's already yeah. dated and if you look at the lord of the rings trilogy they look amazing they look so good i was like is this nostalgia goggles i need to watch the whole series watch the whole series and it's not nostalgia goggles the original trilogy looks better and it's because they relied heavily on model shot and trick photography and cgi was used as complimentary one of my favorite things is minas tirith Minas Tirith looks fucking amazing, right? This is the seat of Gondor. It is the powerhouse of mankind in Middle Earth, and it looks impressive, and it looks like it's there yeah, because it looks they real. used a model and they lit it with CGI, which is what CGI should be doing. It should be complementary. You're not making a cartoon with people in it, like bloody Avatar, which was literally just a cartoon with it was. It was her friend Roger Rabbit. You know? You're just like spiraling out of control now. You're just like there's there's I'm, no survival. Just, You're just everyone's yeah. going into the drink and there'll yeah, be exactly. no there'll be no uh Scully on Scully? Scully? Sully. Sully. There'll be no yeah. Sully on this one. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's, everyone's dead. It's it's yeah, it's uh, it's so frustrating. Yeah. CGI in it's and especially in fantasy films and I, even space movies, if you just compliment it. It oh works. my god i'm so happy you segued so Why? the practical effects versus the cgi effects in one of my favorite movies of all time starship Trip troopers, troopers. Yeah. <laughs> and how yeah. good they look and then the cgi comes on and you're like oh the 90s oh yeah. god yeah. it's touching me era. yeah it looks like the the um it looks worse than the fmvs in final fantasy 8 that's not a compliment yeah He's the prettiest yeah, guy in here. It. Just a bunch of pixels. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's oh man, it's so bad. But the practical effects are amazing. One of my favorite practical shots is when that reporter gets eaten. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's a hundred percent where they're awesome. like, get out of here! And he's just like, well, bug planet. It's a bad planet. Just <laughs> oh, blood and <laughs> viscera. Um, it's yeah, it's the best. And then no, oh, when the thing goes like, into his leg. Awesome. Yeah. 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 Oh, Fantastic. Man. Holy crap. I'm so glad that like we watched that film together because that film was amazing. Um, it's actually, actually amazing. You need to get on Netflix or um, you know your your preferred streaming thing and watch Invasion. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I'll, I, we've, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll hop on watch Invasion. Yeah, because that's that's pretty pretty bloody good. And that was like I said, that was not originally done by anybody involved with anything else. So we're just like. Can we have the IP for two seconds? And they're like, yeah, whatever. You can't do anything more, more damage than we did with it. And they're like, cool. Yeah, here's this thing that's awesome. It. Everyone's like, yeah. fuck, we shouldn't have given A. Now it's on Netflix and everybody knows about it. Shit. <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah, it's on Netflix and everybody knows about it now. Oh, shit. Um, so, okay. <laughs> Unspiraling that, that back. Hawk, yeah, spiraling back. That Horcrux theory, for me, holds water. But her and her sister didn't get along beforehand as well but i think it was more of a like i hate the fact mum and dad loved you more thing than how just utterly spiteful she is post harry living with them oh yeah 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 um, she's, a, she's evil the, the dursleys are properly evil yeah the, um, one of my favorite moments from the dursleys is when um dudley punches harry in the back of the dome when he's been a knob with his magic in five in order of the phoenix he's just been such a piece of shit in the beginning of that book i remember reading that and be like yeah i don't want to keep reading <laughs> came back like six months later yeah um i would agree with that i there is you know there are things that point out reasons that she didn't like it but that civil ri- si- sibling rivalry exists for all of time and it's not 
most people now i'm going to use you yourself as an example don't have strong connections with their family but that's mainly because of the color of their skin throwing it out there white people well it's it's, it's a cultural thing it's not not, not just down to that it's it's, it's it no i blame much, white um, people <laughs> i think when it comes to uh caucasian descent people uh it's it's definitely more of a i mean correct me if i'm wrong here but i think it's more of a society of individualism oh 100 percent community um so yeah so that's that's where that comes from so yeah so if it, uh, um i've seen definitely more from my caucasian friends sibling rivalry than i have with my maori and 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 other community friends where it, they're definitely more tight knit like my siblings and i get on pretty well yeah you um, get on pretty well yeah so it's just like hmm why <laughs> why do people not manage to get along guys your family man like they're like your nah, family family's one of those things you have to succeed in business <laughs> yeah it, family yeah, religion yeah yeah the, the swords to die on right yeah you gotta call uh, all yeah. those things <laughs> yeah, gotta kill kill those things um but yeah yeah i, I think your your idea that that because he's a horcrux and it's poisoned them i think definitely holds water and when he goes to hogwarts everything bad happens to him basically like a lot of like bad stuff happens to him so it's like he he's cursed basically and before anybody in the comments goes you mean the cursed child no i don't mean the cursed child get out right now just go just leave your like your comment and your subscribe get out of here <laughs> get out of here, and also, out of here kid. yeah um, um next next one is the reason that the star wars movies don't make a lot of sense is they're told from the perspective of r2 um r2 d2 because he was there for the entire thing and that's why he makes his best friend um c3po look like a bumbling idiot and him look really clever <laughs> and because he's an older droid and he's getting older and older um his we'll like abilities and, yeah yeah so you know the whole fact that he literally saved everybody yeah. in the in the first movie uh, i'm sorry no i'll take that in the chronologically first movie which is <laughs> yeah. um movie yeah. five because yeah. yes i count the uh the uh, life day method exists. You can't How do you, undo you, it. You, can't undo you get it. out it after you like comments as well, right? <laughs> I'll get out of my own podcast. Okay. <laughs> Keep your hands and feet inside the television at all times. <laughs> all times. <laughs> um, and that's why he comes off as awesome in the first, the, sorry, the original part. Um, so the first, fuck, I keep, I keep saying it in the reboot no it's not even a reboot trilogy in in the, the, the prequel trilogy the prequel trilogy thank you that was the word i was looking for my brain was just like <laughs> guess what you're gonna keep throwing out stuff and it's not gonna make any sense you, you, make, the thing. you make the thing make the eight um that's another game of thrones reference for you <laughs> people <laughs> man I, I i don't know why but that suddenly reminded me of the house of undying and how much cooler it is in the book yeah in oh. the book, they fully show the Red Wedding. Uh, it fully uh, is present in the House of Dying way before it happens. The thing that I have an issue with the TV show, and I completely understand it from a medium that you can't transfer direct words and storylines because, pe- to be brutally honest, if the people who are writing for the show were better, they wouldn't be in the show. Like, I know Martin has, Mr. Martin has done a lot of work, and he put a lot of things, a lot of webs, and they're all attached to everything else, right? That's how he wrote it. Yeah. Right from the beginning. Everything's attached to everything else. Yeah, like the Dornish plot, which is completely removed from the show, and it pisses me right off. My exact point. Mm. Um, when you get into TV, you just have to cut some strings because it's not going to work. Because you do yeah. not have the time frame, the budget, or the actors Here's to just thing, make though. it. Here is the thing. If all of their filler bullshit wasn't in the show, they could still be using the book material. Yeah, but Lonely Lady Stoneheart isn't going to work in the book. Oh, uh, in the movie, sorry. Well, even then, I, even if you remove the Lady Stoneheart stuff, like Jamie's character arc is so much better in the book than yeah, it is in the show. The issue like, with... Yeah, I, I completely agree. The issue with uh, it is like you'll get people that are getting... Because the other thing TV shows do that we all forget is they fudge it just enough so when characters are liked 
they keep them on. So you, <laughs> and that's why you get multiple series of shows that no one can explain why it still exists. Like Bing Bang, Big Bang Theory, which nobody watches. It just wasn't good to begin with. I don't know why that took off. That idea of a nerd, like, is a minority of nerd culture now. But the issue with it is, is that that's not actually real. Yeah. <laughs> Like, just because you're a nerd doesn't make you, like, the top 10, like, smartest like smartest 10% of the world. Like, that's yeah. not how it works, because majority of them are not, I'm going to say this again, they're not white, to be brutally honest. They're not white. <laughs> yeah, which is interesting, because they've got one guy who fits both of the criteria. He's dark-skinned and Asian. Yeah. <laughs> they've got the one Indian character, and I'm just like, huh. And, yeah, very much in my field, um, you know, b- both of the uh cultures that make up my person are the minority <laughs> yeah and i'm just like huh this is really strange that like big bang theory doesn't actually reflect a lot of what happens in their culture like how they um downplayed cosplay culture and nowadays cosplay culture is like people mainstream are look- yeah it's mainstream and it looks cool as fuck where before it and was pe- terrible yeah it was terrible and the thing is is that the idea of cosplay culture that they show in the show it's cosplay culture from like the 80s yeah and all of the stereotypes of how they even dress how they act how they like socially abnormal is the 80s it's revenge of the nerds yeah 100%. but the thing is a revenge of the nerds nerds don't exist anymore no and i'm just like how like how does this show survive on the premise that they've got when that isn't even how these people act now like <laughs> like i'm gonna sound really internet-y for a moment here but you and I have interests that are classically nerdy. hundred percent. Right? But like, we're not like closeted weird cunts that don't know how to talk to the opposite sex. No, they just sort it's of, like, they take something and just keep zooming in. Even though the resolution's yeah. gone, they're just using that blown up image where they yeah. should have taken oh. a higher, high, what you do when you're writing for an actual character is you take a high resolution image of the entire person and then you zoom into one part and then every time that something happens in their life they expand it out and it's called character development yeah the problem with absolutely. this show is they've just taken and it's it, like it like i said the original analogy i used which is they've taken a really low resolution picture and they just keep blowing it up bigger and bigger and the like i saw um someone had edited out there's a prequel series now by the way yeah where he's a kid eh? Yeah, and then it it's going to run for long enough to it makes up for the, the the pilot episode. Apparently, that's their plan if if, if the show takes off. Wow, that's um, awful. Yeah, completely, completely awful. I completely forgot what tangent I was going on to. Uh, <laughs> uh, next piece of headcanon: uh, Homer is God. Homer is God. Homer is God. It's why nothing changes in Springfield. Springfield is literally impossible because they have. A, there's a God though. Yeah, but you know you can have conversation with yourself. God is also the only character in The Simpsons with five fingers. I'm moving my fingers. Yeah. You might be able to hear it. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Here's some. Here's some fingers ASMR. Yeah. There you go. Just for you. Just for you kids at home. So, so okay, you're gonna have to break this one down for me. Homer okay, is God. Homer is God. Um, his family never changes, yet the climate mm. of what they're in changes. So it's obvious right. from the time we, before we had cell phones to the time we have cell phones and the internet was in the show that mm. his kids are the same age. Um, Springfield is literally impossible because they can't be bordered on by four states and have a deep seaport and a lake and a whole bunch of other <laughs> stuff like mountain ranges largest mountain in that like state um be completely bordered on by another state like a twin town that's in another state uh, which oh, is legit- what the hell was it i don't think they even mentioned that town anymore do they what the hell was it called shelbyville shelbyville yeah that's it they're a bunch of rednecks eh? yeah um <laughs> the interesting one is when the movie came out which was supposed to be the end of the series and they also planned it like five years earlier um it shows like where the hell they are like secretly it shows you where they are and they're in the middle of like flat land right (laughs) yeah how did they have a deep water port with a with a lighthouse yeah (laughs) yeah they're right next to a beach yeah but no (laughs) then they're not it's yeah that's why the homer is god theory um in my head canon is how you can explain 
everything in the show changing and it not affecting anybody same. and saying yeah. the same yeah yeah so it's more like so okay here's the thing though in one of the treehouse of horrors which i know are technically not canon and also the best episodes but continue yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah i suppose um some of them are a bit shit um but yes i suppose that the some of them are very very good they're more of a sketch comedy than they are the normal simpsons um is they show that the simpsons is a um a virtual world yeah uh that was so the... homer falls out of um through the bookshelf and ends up in our reality and you find out that the simpsons is like a, a cloud basically like a an, a an internet cloud before internet clouds were a thing yeah and the other way to explain that is he is a god of so his he own be the reality program he is a god of his own reality yeah, yeah. so he, he could be like um what the hell's his name the mcp from the original tron yeah you disappoint me star sock oh, fuck, I love you. you love tron yeah i do i love tron <laughs> Finn loves. I, I i've got like it's weird because there's like not much continuity for tron except for um like disney f- cleaned up the timeline because there's like heaps of spin-off material and now there are only two pieces of spin-off material that are canon a video game for the ps3 and the xbox 360 and a comic and i'm like ah oh. <laughs> but i wanted this other eu to be canon disney Disney don't like canon, do they? They turn nah, they're not a into... huge fan of EU, man. They're not a huge fan. It's probably because whoever's in charge of whatever they're doing next has to then for read or be explained to everything, and they probably just don't physically have the time. Yeah, like but Fox in saying did. that, though, MCU, the MCU have a canon team that work on the canon. Yeah, but they didn't buy a pre-existing product and then yeah, relabel it. Yeah, I suppose it. they made it from the ground up. Yeah, that's a good point. They would have spent um, years planning the MCU. Um, yeah, I'm so glad it paid off because holy crap! Hey, has anybody seen the uh, Avengers Four trailer? Because uh, I'm excited. No, I and it's not even like full of action scenes. It's like just interesting. I saw a trailer this morning that was the Game of Thrones teaser. Oh really? Yeah. Oh wow, they're competing with Disney for internet time. That's pretty ballsy. I didn't even know it happened yeah it's either. it's 53 seconds long to my memory oh, so it's actually just literally a teaser yeah it shows the map of westeros and ice crystals forming heading south and fire heading north and that meets in the middle and a song like, is ice and fire uh, i did the thing and everyone knows who's read the box and also watched up to season seven is that the song of ice and fire is literally the song of the heritage of fucking Jon Snow, aka, AKA Aegon T- Targaryen. Yeah. Well, okay, here's the, here is the crazy thing, right? Is that, like, Daenerys in the book actually sees her brother holding a child that he calls the prince that was promised. Yeah. Which means she saw Jon Snow in the House of the Undying in the book. That's so cool. And since the writers of the show knew John's parentage before they started making the series, because there was a prerequisite before George would allow them to take the rights. So 100%. Like, he's like, you have to tell me. Why don't they have that scene? It's so cool. They just have Rhaegar and Lyanna. Oh, oh, another thing that I wish they kept, and they totally could have, is um, Ned thinking about the promise, because it really would have made when... Um, John is finally announced as Aegon, and they show the Tower of Love. Um, is uh, it was a Tower of Love and Blue Flowers. Yeah. When, when he goes there and she says, "Promise me, Ned," it would have been people would have been like, "Oh shit!" The thing he was imagining about when he was in the fucking prison cell in season one. Yeah, but should have been like, a cool nah. throwback. Like, would have been nah. like fans would have been like, "That's hype," but they're like, "Oh no, fans!" Like you were saying earlier, people were like short term memory loss and like. Shit, man. And there's somebody who actually has a, an extremely poor memory, uh, which is funny because I don't have a sweet tooth. So I don't know why mine sucks <laughs> so much. Um, for me, uh, if, if I can remember something like that from a book I read, like I think five years ago now, a book series I read that long ago, I can remember this level of detail. I'm pretty certain even idiots who watch Game of Thrones could have followed that. And if they didn't, their friends on Facebook would have explained it to them. Yeah, it's a dark thing about these days, eh? Seriously. I'm glad you bridged <laughs> over that subject. When anything comes out, 
and you're in a different time zone, or it's not released in your country, aka, like, literally the only way to watch Game of Thrones when it comes out in New Zealand because of stupid laws we put in place yeah. friggin' Thanks. decades ago, which doesn't make any sense, is you yeah. either pirate well, it- No, it does make sense. It's because Sky's got their finger in the government's pocket. Like, our government is actually sponsored by Sky. Does that fuck with your head? Because it fucks with mine. Well, it will, but right up until their entire- company collapses and I can't piss on wait. Their I'm so looking forward to that <laughs> i can't wait for sky to fall netflix is here disney have a streaming service coming out next year sky you need to fuck off yeah because i was gonna say is hbo go i believe it's the uh, program's called yeah is that correct the, the only way to watch game yeah, of thrones that, that, that's, uh, their, that's their streaming service yeah yeah it's either that or um or sky and i'm not paying a yeah. hundred and nine dollars or whatever the hell it is a month yeah right that's so shit like netflix i can watch anything i want on any device i want for like 15 dollars a month yeah <laughs> like sky you can fuck off and sky's like saving grace is is that they came because new zealand on air tvnz so for all you guys that don't know because like new zealand's tiny and no one knows anything about us we have a a bit like the bbc we used to actually have to pay a license rights like the british used to uh, still do uh for tvnz and they had the legal right to live stream sport. And then th- we got Channel 3 in the mid-90s. And they got the rights to the live stream Rugby League. And so we had these two ways. And for all you guys that don't know, Rugby League is like, if, imagine rugby, but even more violent. And it doesn't have the armor of gridiron. So just keep that in mind. We're pretty ruckus here, all right? We're, 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 we go to the school of hard knocks here. Um, and <laughs> then Sky comes along starts popping up satellites around new zealand and they're like hey we want you to sign exclusive deals with us to live stream sport and because sport unfortunately is one of the few exports we have because we have state-of-the-art athletes here i don't know if you can say that about humans but we pretty much do we've got some fucking good athletes in new zealand the new zealand government were like okay cool and then ever since then sky has been milking the teats of our government the disturbing part about how kiwis are so involved in sport is when the all blacks loss um crime rate goes up yeah <laughs> like it's, literally our our entire like the police are like uh so the all blacks lost we gotta deploy more units uh we're gonna take more domestic abuse calls there'll be more robberies more more like drunk uh, and drunken disorderly it's just like it, we're an entire country it's ridiculous it's just like we're controlled by an outside source which isn't yeah. an outside source but it's so minute within like Oh, is the milk prices in China gone down? Is that why people are committing more cr- more crime? Or is the price of beef in Europe going up and that's why no one's buying kiwi beef and kiwi lamb? No. It's the <laughs> fact that all people picked up a hand egg and tried to run over a line and we didn't get there. And oh, no, I've got to beat my wife. Oh, I didn't get my TB, yeah. TAB payout. Oh, no, the kids aren't going to go to school with lunch tomorrow. That's yeah. broken. It's a broken system. It's pretty bad. And uh, it reminds me, um, in 2011, uh, our economy was struggling and New Zealand's housing market was starting to fall on its own ass. And as a result, a lot of people were being pretty much shat on by the government uh, for just existing, basically. And instead of addressing it and trying to tackle it, we managed to get the World Cup to come here, the Rugby World Cup, and then they were just like, oh, hey, the Prime Minister got drunk at the World Cup. Yay. And because New Zealand is so brainwashed by rugby, it's good. it just, good everybody forgot about it. Yeah, 100%. I just, yeah, and it really pissed me off. And I was just like, what I really wanted from that, and this is going to sound like mean, but I kind of wish we lost. Because <laughs> then people would have been like, like people would have been like, oh, like the All Blacks lost. Yeah. And also, um, people around the country are struggling to survive, even though they're actually working their asses off. It's not achieving anything in their life. Let's for the the home listener, for the people <laughs> that aren't in the live studio audience. Um, <laughs> I currently have three hundred thousand dollars to buy a house, and I'm not even looking for a house. I'm literally looking for an apartment. And this isn't New York City. This isn't <laughs> a major city with millions of people living here. Uh, what is the population of Wellington? It's like uh, I think it's like three hundred thousand. Yeah, I was gonna say it's, it's not. It's, it's not too large. Yeah, three hundred thousand people, and I can't buy a house for three hundred thousand dollars. 
yeah and so let's put that into perspective here guys um i think your house has gone up by that amount since yeah you owned my it house has actually gone up that that amount by it since i owned it so if i bought my house that i'm in now with the same amount of money i had at the time when i bought it and tried to buy this house i wouldn't be allowed to buy my house yeah so it's been great and my favorite thing about that <laughs> about when it started collapsing in on itself is our prime minister at the time resigned put in place a guy everyone fucking hates everyone hates his face he's tried running for prime minister before no one gets it because he's such a piece of shit <laughs> you know put in place it was like can you be the prime minister for like the last half a year and he's like oh okay and then his party tried to run again him as the face of the party and they failed <laughs> and it was just like and our prime minister was going to get investigated yeah so he jumped ship he pulled a nixon and got the fuck out of dodge before he got in heaps of shit good for him though because he was always a crafty so that's the thing that's the thing a eh? piece of shit man the people forget and that literally that's it's another thing because we're now going into um <laughs> we're now going into overtime so yeah. um on on things that aren't related to the original subject but which is fantastic this is, i wanted it to be as organic <laughs> as possible mm. um head canon for me is that you actually have no control and uh a great quote from someone i knew his name was mitch uh he was a one of very few new zealanders that people know about that was deployed to vietnam and he said to me uh one day it was an old man when i knew him obviously it wasn't like you know time travel and all this this is a real st- <laughs> this is a real story he said to me don't sweat the big stuff because the big stuff is bigger than you and it'll crush you um worry about the things you can do in the in the short term because they're the ones that make the most impact on your friends and family and the people around you and i was just like wow that's really inspirational but that would have been fine like to be brutally honest i i look back with that reflection and i I remember other things that elderly people you know the the greatest generation that's gone and no one cares about because like dying in retirement homes the people that actually have more information than we do but it's like it's not on our iphone so we don't care (laughs) <laughs> fucking tell me about it man their time frame was a hell of a lot different than ours like mm. and that's from the 80s to 90s to 2000s to what are we now 20 2020s the last 10 years of the of the human race for a long time for another 100 years um we don't have any clue about anything because yeah everything it's it's 1984 like a hundred percent that's what's happened folks that's what we've signed over to yeah actually happened yeah Uh, yeah and and you're right like there are things about life and this is definitely a western issue right so a hundred percent schooling teaches you how to like be alive yeah but uh, like i said the the the, our grandparents generation were taught how to do like tax and shit like proper important shit in school and when i went to school they were like oh you don't like math give it up which i did (laughs) <laughs> the first chance i could because i was like i don't fucking like this but you know they didn't have a choice they had to do it and i think as a result it allowed them to be better at living oh yeah i mean, I, I mean you know that they, they had some bad prejudices at the time but their ability to be alive is significantly superior to the ones that we have now like if it wasn't for my wife who uh, for listeners out there is is uh, chinese national I would I would not be in the financial situation I'm in now because I just wouldn't get it. Yeah, it's it's hard. Um, going back to what I was saying earlier, like when I rang the bank originally and applied for my mortgage because uh, I got a certificate of approval for people who don't know anything about mortgages, <laughs> uh, which was me about what six months ago. I had no friggin' clue because it's not taught to you. you you're not. No. It's, it's like a secret world that only people that you grew up in when they your family owned a house and talked to you about stuff like that like to be brutally honest my mum is getting on mm. um she's getting on in both her life and her career like she's never gonna earn a hundred thousand mm. dollars like it's it's not gonna happen for her for a simple fact is that you know what she wanted to do she couldn't do and blah 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 without getting too much personal detail in when i told her that i was literally had a deposit she was just like that's mental i couldn't imagine having that much money in my bank account and it's like that makes no sense that makes yeah. literally no sense we my generation is the most busted generation they're like oh these these bloody 
uh, millennials and all their problems. They're too busy eating avocado toast and they're not buying diamonds <laughs> and that's the reason the economy is going down. It's like, no, it's because the parents that I had told me that only buy things you're going to afford and mm-hmm. that diamonds are bullshit. They're just shiny rocks. They that's are li- just literally shiny rock. Yeah. You can actually, no shit, guys, for you at home, heat up a coal, put it in peanut butter and then freeze it. <laughs> congratulations yeah. you've got a diamond might not have the same molecular structure but it might look just as pretty it's it's interesting that um because that was all a that was all a scam the yeah it was created by um victorian jewelers yeah because they were like how do we trick young men into buying diamonds oh i've got a good idea if they buy diamond wedding rings for their proposals women will say yes so let's make a massive ad campaign that says that and everyone's like oh you got a diamond ring that means you're getting married like those two <laughs> things aren't related yeah but but they are now (laughs) kiddo it's it's like the same reason that when i was a little kid rainbows made rainbows meant unicorns and and uh what are those things from ireland leprechauns Leprechauns, there we go unicorns and leprechauns were related to rainbows now it's about the the um lgbt whatever else how many other initials that they add on to that is these days um that's what took it over 100% 100% like things change due to marketing and yeah, um, marketing changes the world it's like um Santa traditionally wore blue Saint Nicholas the yeah. bishop of um was it bishop of Trelloy Trevoy I can't remember now somewhere in Turkey he was a rich uh, guy that used to give poor kids presents so they wouldn't realize how well much. actually he was actually um actually quite destitute he used the money that the uh, church was provided to buy those gifts yeah which don't they um, don't pay tax and haven't for yeah so he was like like war blue um and like you use the time that he spent raising church funds to give to the community and then coke came along and we're like if we make him read like a coke cola label people will buy a coca-cola at christmas yeah and and so red became associated <laughs> with christmas because of coca-cola at a hundred percent because i remember as a kid going to coca-cola christmas in the park oh my yeah man holy shit coca-cola christmas in and the park. for all you people arguing right now in the in the great because this is gonna get super dated because it's not relevant <laughs> after probably about 20 minutes because that's how the short-term memory of the internet works is <laughs> With all this crap going on about like some white center not saying that a woman or a black guy can you know a person of not white descent can play center when i was a kid santa was a freaking maori all right he was yeah a i've got nothing i oh mean I, I was absolutely disgusted with the reaction people had to that yeah like oh he will he'll steal the gifts from them i was just like what the fuck and this is the thing that like people just don't get prejudice and uh, yeah people just don't get it, it it's evil it's inherited from your parents and i'm just like why the fuck it's ah oh man it's I, I probably can't say this because of like fucking legal ramifications but <laughs> i've had to complain about this behavior at my job and upper management just don't care i'm like but what they're saying isn't good yeah diversity can go both ways and it, and, it, and the issue is is that um the way we're going is there's no actual end to it because you know, when, when you have people saying you're misgendering an animal by calling it a boy cat, it's just like, no, that's it's not, no. People are fighting over the wrong things. Yeah, we're that's 100% fighting, that's yeah, we're exactly fighting my point. Thing. We're yeah. fighting over the wrong things. Yeah, so uh, like for me, I think, you know, like um, I, I am a huge fan of Christina Hoff. Um, she is a, a feminist um, a columnist and uh, economist from America. I love her work. And she, one of her things is modern feminism needs to go to countries where women are heavily oppressed and murdered for being women and go fight the good fight there. But But they won't because they're afraid they're going to be called racist. Yeah, but they did that and that lady was murdered. She was was sexually assaulted and murdered for the first day she was there. That's, That's what actually happened to the actual person who was like, it's a safe place for women to go. And it's yeah. like, I'm a woman and lit without an escort of a man because the law in their country. And yeah, she was sexually assaulted and yeah. murdered. Because you imagine, right, for a moment, if if Kate Shepard, right, was like, oh, no, I'm not going to fight for a woman to get the right to vote because it's uh, culturally insensitive to our culture. 
Yeah. Yeah. Imagine that. One would still be very much a second class citizen in New Zealand. Um, so I, don't worry someone, about that. We you, we need to fight the good fight. There are countries out there, literally, like you just said, women are being killed for being women. Yeah. Go fight the fight there. Fuck, I'll join you. Yeah. Like, fuck. There's the thing people forget. In the, the Pankhurst family, which who were the leading suffragette family in the, the UK, and Kate Shepard had men helping them. Yeah. Because they, they, I mean, they had to. So if you're going to go and fight these good fights, there are blokes that will help. And they're not white knighting. They're genuinely interested in helping their fellow human being. Oh, sorry, Hugh person being. You <laughs> fucking idiot. Yeah. <laughs> um, fucking idiot. Um, I'm just going to go back to the a statement that, um, that I keep seeing on Facebook from a friend who's quite politically vocal um when it's just like just anything related to a crusade eh? it's just like is that crusade talk i hear and it's true <laughs> that's 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 you know the world would change dramatically if we went back to that sort of reactionary if we react via our thumbs where we used to yeah. react via our fists yeah and the problem is is that because everyone can else can hear thumbs where you couldn't really hear fists because the mm. fists were like way off in the far field and that's that's the problem because everyone listens to thumbs rather than like actions actions yeah and that's such a like yeah. oh today they'll be like a, oh that's a toxic that's a toxic me-. no no literally this is this is how history was formed is when you had yeah. kings and queens of countries being like go die over there and kill as many of them as you can and you'd be like yes ma'am or sir yeah and you'd yes, run off so run off on your little horse and go slaughter a whole bunch of people and be like, did I do a good job? And they're like, you missed some. And they'll be like, okay, I'm going back. That's how history, like Alexander the Great, when he formed the large, one of the largest empires in the in history of the human race, was 20 years old. Yeah. So We're yeah, all really stuck at uni, good. and that's why I don't believe in secondary education, folks. Because <laughs> 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 you should be conquering other countries. Yeah, uh, so, yeah, that's the thing is, is, is I, I think, I mean, young people really still are the makers of the modern zeitgeist. I mean, you look at things like um, Instagram and the like, I think is putrid, but um, <laughs> I, I think we need to, we, we need to f- start fighting the good fight. It's like back in the 50s, the late 50s, 60s and the 70s, people were definitely fighting for the right reasons politically right yeah. like the happy movement you can disagree with but people were really trying desperately to get us to just stop blowing the shit out of each other the the civil rights movement were like hey can we please finally be on equal footing like not be like just treated like shit just because we're a different skin color and they succeeded people need to fight and not these stupid little fucking marches that achieve nothing like it, we, you need proper movement now malcolm x had some rather drastic ways to fight forward but the Black Panther movement actually got a lot of heads turning. Yeah. Like, yeah, they were doing some crime um, and stuff that was, isn't acceptable. For you kids but at home, a, it was, it's, um, Black Panther was part of the MCU. And that's what we're discussing. <laughs> yeah. 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 The, well, I mean, the, the, I very uh, much Captain hit America Black Panther's name. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Black Panther, the character, was very much a representation of that, right? The, the fight and the good fight for black people. Yeah. It's funny. Like, I remember uh, there was this fucking, I can't remember her name. I'm just going to call her Dumb McDumdum. So Dumb McDumdum, she was all like, oh man, turns out Stan Lee's an evil piece of shit on Twitter. And if you look at his characters and the reason he wrote them, the X-Men, Black Panther, Luke Cage, it's because he was like, people should have equal rights. This white guy yeah. was fighting for equal rights using an artistic medium. So you can shut the fuck up, Dummy McDumdum. I have seen somebody in the comments can actually fucking remind me of his stupid fucking name. You didn't fight for fucking anything. Like, Stanley literally could have gotten heaps of shit for having a black main character. Yeah. So much shit. But he did it anyway. Him and Jack Kirby. Yeah, they ended up falling out because, like, he was getting famous. But that's what happens when you're the face of a business. Yeah. Um, Fans knew his face. <laughs> that's why he got famous. And it wasn't until, like, most people these days wouldn't give a shit if he wasn't for the cameos. Like, yeah. Um, Even though he actually was, like, legitimately fighting the good fight. Most people wouldn't be able to tell you until, you know, recently anything. And it's uh, that's another thing going back to 19, maybe 20-something segues ago. Um, yeah. <laughs> nerd culture is no longer, like, back of the, back of the room. It's now yeah. mainstream culture. 
we're yeah. literally getting excited about trailers being released for movies based on superheroes mm. which when i was a little kid my parents never would have gone to see a superhero movie that wasn't like even batman they were like oh no nah, nah. that was a hard sell batman yeah. was still a hard sell because it was a comic book and like comic books for little kids yeah exactly yeah so yeah the cultural zeitgeist like i was like, like we were saying 20 segues ago the cultural zeitgeist has changed where nerd culture is everybody's culture yeah. everybody plays video games even people who hate nerds play video games you're, fuck you noob you yeah. know you're playing your bops or whatever the fuck they call it these days fortnite and fortnite if you had told me about fortnite 20 years ago right so on windows 95 it's using fucking 2.5 d cell shading like duke nukem yeah good times everybody would like that's some dumb loser game yeah 100%. but because society has changed so much it is everybody's game kids fucking women unemployed. and and men adults are playing this fucking game it's led to 200 divorces you know it's like it's like people fucking when they go oh i don't play games and they're playing candy crush i'm like but you're playing a game right now like, oh this is next to your game i was like yes it is it is a video game where there are points there is an ad- objective you are doing stuff in a game there is a video game the, the culture has changed. This is why I quite liked and Stranger Things, they had like the nerdy D&D players, right? They didn't do Big Bang Theory where that's happening in the modern setting where they're still nerds because that isn't the case. Like we saw yesterday, you and I physically saw on Twitch, there are people, good looking motherfuckers too, playing D&D, right? The nerdy weird people in the modern cultural zeitgeist are not the ones running the mainstream nerd culture. Mainstream not- nerd culture is hot, sexy people. Not to mention the fact that even if we fought him at the same time yeah. and had like telepathy, so we knew could tell the other person without communicating out loud what the other person was going to do, you know, to try and get like leg holds and things like that, both of us would not be able to take out one of the most famous D&D players, which is Vin Diesel. And that's yeah. how we got an entire movie made because he was basing it around his character that he plays in D&D yeah vin diesel, vin one, diesel. Of the, one of the sexiest actors that has ever existed <laughs> yeah and he's a DD player and he's a huge nerd a huge yeah, nerd. he's a huge have you seen his first ever acting gig uh it was the one where he street was sharks? Like, yeah 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 street shark i love street sharks as a kid man i thought street sharks was cool as fuck they were like a fucking rock and roll band that were sharks <laughs> oh my god you could not get that it's interesting that you could I oh, know Peter would have a fucking field day now. You try and fucking do anthropomorphic rocking metal shark people, no way would that fly, bro. I'm just saying that you wouldn't be able to pitch anything to a studio like that anymore. <laughs> yeah, unless you went, like, independent. Yeah, because the only thing that ever made game, uh, made TV shows in the days was because they had a toy product they wanted to sell, right? Because that's, yeah. that's how the entire thing existed, and that was what we were talking about yesterday relating to why the x-men got a x-men character toys in 2003 bought the beat that lawsuit relating to the fact that there was going to be a tax on dolls and they used yeah. a legal claim that they're mutants so therefore not dolls because they're not humans and therefore <laughs> didn't have to pay the tax and that's brilliant that is brilliant yeah. um, which is great because like the original title for the book series was going to be the mutants and um stanley's editor at the time was like nobody knows what the fuck a mutant is change the name yeah <laughs> so he called them the x-men they're like good it's deadly and in the interview was just like people would understand what mutants are more than they'd understand what the fucking x-men is yeah but they're called the x-men now and <laughs> just gonna make it and, really the, and the bad guys are called the brotherhood of evil mutants so the mutants still made it in to the story weren't they just called the brotherhood no they were called the brotherhood of evil mutants oh and nowadays they're just called the brotherhood yeah but at the time they because the 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 book series was supposed to be the mutants and the evil mutants yeah and i'm kind of glad they went with the x-men to be honest (laughs) even though mutant is an actual word in the english dictionary x-men is so much cooler sorry x person for you fucking idiots out there no you can you no that's no no and that's another thing one of the most yeah. powerful and relevant main characters for x-men is not only african african mm. and a female yeah nah, not diverse enough yeah. not diverse enough they're yeah. a fucking russian this is the, something that's also cool about fucking like stanley and his fucking like getting things i mean yeah there was some 
there was some 50s dialogue definitely in the early days but it was the early days and it was the times but if you look at the x-men there's a lot of inclusion you know you had gene gray in the first issue joining the x-men yeah. right and becoming one of the key players in a team that's been established had existed before she came along had superpowers that were just awesome <laughs> she had awesome awesome powers and she was a strong female lead yeah and i'm almost like fuck man you look at comic books at the time they were like getting saved by doc savage while he like punched a cheetah right that was a type of comic book that featured a woman back then yeah and then you had fucking marvel's first family with the fantastic four and yep. sue's just as intelligent as reeds richards yeah then fucking later on with the second x-men team you've got a russian a russian character in a mainstream book in a time where americans were still afraid of the reds yeah red panic and family's like they're just people they're just fucking people and he's the loveliest guy colossal is colossus is so fucking gentle he is a poet a gentle giant and actually invincible just happens to be russian and then they introduced like you said storm and they brought a fucking canadian onto the team this is like what the hell this the, oh, they, they even had an irishman and the original lineup was fucking what was his name uh banshee yeah so like he's making it diverse as fuck but old stupid mcdumdum oh no no stanley was a bad person oh, okay somebody was actually uh decades before you were born fighting doing, the good fight doing more than you've yeah. ever done <laughs> doing more than you've ever done in your entire fucking life decades fuck before you were born <laughs> like oh no he, yeah, he's a bad person like fucking lick my asshole oh sorry that's too sexually suggestive lick my poo ring <laughs> <laughs> why does that make it worse <laughs> the ring where my poo comes up <laughs> <laughs> exactly like straight up fuck you man like oh head cannon though right yeah a uh, back uh <laughs> reversing back um <laughs> yeah uh head cannon for well, something we'll stay we'll stay on the same subject mm, mm. the joker in the suicide squad and this variation of the dc universe that is currently in theaters um aquaman just got a is apparently planning for a second one um really the First joker pl- played by jared leto is not the original joker as a red hood joker the joker is actually the reborn joker that is uh one of the previous robins so like the um beyond timeline uh th- where tim drake became joker yeah 100 yeah, percent. now here's like that. here's the reasons why i believe that fact mm-hmm. one that little sneak little hemp uh to the robin suit yeah, uh, ha 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 spray paint on it yeah the fact that it's old man bruce rather than like young hot new bruce so he's all yeah. gruff and a whole oh, yeah and the joker's young and the joker's young the fact that his methods are more like red hoods than any other joker variation because mm. heath ledger it's like all he's got in his pockets are lint and knives that yeah. is not the kind of person who would tactically have a help take over a helicopter and have mini guns set up and be firing an ak out of the back window <laughs> That is Red Hood. Red Hood used guns. Red Hood used yeah. guns when he stopped, like, you know, that is that sort of era of Joker re- reimagining, yeah. re- rebranding. Um, I really like his teeth and his tattoos, and I don't think he got enough screen time in the movie. Yeah, he 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 really, really didn't. Um, apparently there's a Joker cut now, where they put more of the Joker back in. But it's I the think- extended cut, and I've watched it, and I own it on Blu-ray. Yes, but it's still, like still not enough um here's my problem with that is they should not have given that trailer house the editorial rights to the film yep it should have been edited the way it was originally going to be edited because they had already gone with this whole like dark brooding atmosphere yeah so i mean as much as i think (laughs) batman vs superman and man of steel need a fucking lot of work to be actually good movies i think this is already the horse you rode in on you need to ride out on the same horse. Yeah. Because they, they've been changing tech. Like Justice League, when they reshot it, they uh, got him fucking. What's his name? Joss Whedon. Like, Joss, brother, I love Firefly, but I just. I think that's. I mean, I just love. I, that's the only thing I like from you. Like, <laughs> you didn't I'm like. Sorry. You didn't like, like Buffy? Did you ever watch Buffy? Well, I hate Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I hated it when I was a kid. I thought it was so fucking dumb. I was just like, this is dumb. I want to just watch Dragon Ball Z. No, I See that's like, that's probably actually that. the standout part that shows the difference between my age and your age right there. 
is because when I first watched Buffy, when Buffy was originally on TV, there yeah. was nothing else that was like appealing to me on that level. Right. Where you could have interesting um, relationships between basically two dimensional c- characters. They were like, he's the nerd <laughs> and he's the butch guy and she's the Dude, bad- badass. Like the, the fucking backflips and shit. Holy my God. Yeah. <laughs> I remember as a kid, I was like, nah. <laughs> I'm going to watch a guy power up for nine episodes yeah. in one I'm, place. I'm literally just going to go watch Dragon Ball Z. Yeah. I had Dragon Ball Z. I had fucking um, Shinzo. There was a lot of like good action orientated. Uh, this is probably going to make me fucking sound like Delrith. But uh, <laughs> I just think there was the stuff that was even more good. I, I thought Sailor Moon was more engaging. I actually really enjoy Sailor Moon. Uh, and Card Kept a Sakura, which I own all of the manga and the DVDs. Um <laughs> Her That's friend right. is so in love with her, it's so sad. <laughs> it's a relationship yeah, but, that'll never yeah. happen. Yeah, but oh man, that actually pisses me off with the dub with all this like they're just good friends. It's like, yeah, but no, like Tomoy or, or Madison, as we called her in the dub, is actually like sexually attracted to her. Yeah, in the why, manga. Why else would uh, you make uniforms that are basically oh, well, you know, you know, like, uh, yeah, go on and explain it. Go on, go on, go on. I, I'm, I'm probably going to get flagged for this, um, and I completely understand if I do. Um, but girls do like dressing up. So, as best friends, and girls do put on each other's clothes as well. That is a real thing. Um, sorry, bro, but I won't put your clothes on. That's for sure. <laughs> you probably can't fit them anyway. But, um, bro, I can't even fit my own clothes. The amount of weight I've lost is fucking ridiculous. <laughs> um, but w- with that, is the, you know, that, that, that in the dub, it would work because friends really do do uh, you know girlfriends do do that together but also coming back from the manga's point of view it really was because she idolized her in a romantic way and it, it really wouldn't happen for her because a sakura at that age for sakura is i suppose a late bloomer she's very asexual as a character you know she's she's very much not interested in this that or the other except for um her brother's boyfriend uh, which in the dub was just his friend again. Because he's got to turn um, down for us whiteies. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing, right? It's, that's the thing is, is like Japan, even though it's quite, um, they have some social development to do as well. But I mean, everybody does. Um, in 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 the space of the LGBTQ community, um, there is a lot of progressive gay media in Japan that's actually good. Like, is, you know, there's, there's some gay media in the West that's just like not good like even my gay friends are like that's actually just not good fiction for us and i think it's it's weird that it got oppressed here i mean it's because of the christians and i mean it definitely is because of the christians that it got oppressed but i feel if it didn't i think having this positive gay representation when we were growing up would have allowed our generation to progress even faster, faster. than we have and then it wouldn't yeah. be this weird backlash that we've sort of got where everyone's just yeah. like i don't actually get that's the problem. It's it's 1984 again. It's like, oh, this this has happened. It's like, I don't care. Where's yeah. the next fucking movie trailer? Where's the next book coming out? Where's my book, Martin? Where the fuck is it? Where is Winds of Winter? The book, Martin. Winds of Winter needs to come out. And then, like, if you do a double whammy and you release Winds of Winter and A Dream of Spring at the same time. He's not going you. to. He's not going to. <laughs> He's not going to. And the thing is, he's a very unhealthy man. There's a high chance he'll die before they both come out. I love to response to that statement is, I don't give a fuck. I'll be dead. And I was just like, that's, that's a valid point. That's a, that's a very valid point there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he'll be dead. He, he, he might, why would he care? But at the same token, pro, please, come on. Look after yourself. Write your books. Yeah. Because we love you. All right? I love your work. Yeah, I love your work. And when I see interviews with you, you're actually a pretty on the ball kind of guy too so i like you too so you know for the love of everybody who loves you do something about that finish your shit, <laughs> finish your shit. get healthy we love yeah. you yeah um, um what do you think of the proposed prequel series well because hmm. hbo's are gonna need another nest egg son we can't we can't have home box i office. think they should just adapt something else instead that, of doing a prequel to game of thrones yeah but they've run out of wars yeah that's yeah. that's the problem. We only know how to make media based on actual things that happened. Like even Game of Thrones is the War of the Roses, yeah. which is a legitimate thing that happened in yeah. our past. Yeah, that which will... Europe is still salty about. Yeah, <laughs> super salty. Yeah, I mean when you guys fucking did this thing, dude, there was literally six hundred years. Shut the fuck up, bro. It still happened. Okay, still happened. Like it was six hundred years ago. Um, I wake up and she's burning my gums. 
<laughs> it was two years ago, Matt. You let, let it, it go. go. It's just really hard to get. <laughs> For people oh, who man. don't know what the hell we're talking about, it's a proper point of view of an interview with a guy who's clearly living in another country with a foreign or woman of that nationality. And he's complaining <laughs> about her burning his bread. <laughs> now, why that is funny to Kiwis is because that bread is fucking expensive and delicious. And also really I'm, tiny. The, the thing is, is I'm of a mind. I don't like Vogels. I feel I feel it's too rubbery. Oh, I would that's completely, my, that's my it's opinion. got strong texture for making a sandwich with, though. Oh, talking about sandwiches. Sorry for the segue again. No, segue, but why the, the fuck are sandwiches not buttered anymore? Because butter's unhealthy. Hate. Apparently. Oh no, it's not. I know. No, it isn't. Margarine is unhealthy. Oh yeah, margarine butter has terrible K twelve in it. Yeah, Ma- butter has K twelve. It is one of the, the very few ways we can get K twelve, and K twelve is actually beneficial. Yeah, it should be done in moderation, but everything you fucking eat is supposed to be in moderation. Put butter on the fucking sandwich so I can eat it. There's only one place I go to <laughs> that does that, and it is the deli at New World Metro. And New World Metro's food isn't the greatest. It probably needs their butter. <laughs> Yeah, 100%. Go to the new world on the CV on the on the waterfront, guys. For all of you people living in Wellington, go to the waterfront one because their deli is fucking amazing. Yeah, no, I go there yes. every week. Um, it was also yeah. the most expensive supermarket in the entire of New Zealand. Fun fact. Oh, the me. new world in the South Island? No, the, the one new, No, the new world on the CBD. The one oh, like I, I, less I than a block away from work. Water. Um. Oh, pro- yeah, but that's probably we're getting, me- we're getting mega New Zealand right now. Yeah. Super New Zealand. Super New Zealand. <laughs> Up next on the New Zealand podcast, uh, fucking All Blacks lost. Uh, <laughs> the fucking All Blacks lost. Gonna if be you need my someone wife. to punch, come and come down to my fucking place and you punch me. Come over to my my. <laughs> <laughs> no, let's not do that, thank you. No, 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 no. go there. Don't go there, Shani. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Oh, also, that- hey, if anybody in the comments can tell me where is a good place to watch Turkish TV outside of Netflix with English subtitles, I really need to know. Thank you. Duff. That is the most <laughs> bizarre request I've ever heard. I know, I know. Uh, my, my mother watches Turkish television on How? Netflix. What? Uh, Netflix has Turkish television shows. Uh, okay. Netflix is doing a prequel to Bahubali, my favorite Indian film of all time. They're actually making one. I haven't even got through all the stuff that's in English yet. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm really excited for that. A Netflix based, a, a prequel series to my favorite Indian film, not Bollywood guys. It's made by South Indian company. So don't worry. There's not all the fucking random dancing and stuff, but um, <laughs> God, it's getting a prequel Spider-Man. series. That's actually based on um, books that are like, there's an EU to it. So clearly Disney's not picking this one up. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I, I am trying to find the specific show she wants because it's got a favorite actor in it and it's from like the beginning of his career and I'm trying to find it so that she can watch it. So for my mum, guys, please. For his mum, guys. <laughs> I'll definitely be watching them too, but primarily for my mum. It's actually interesting what you, you bring up there because people forget that there's countries inside of Europe, if you know what I mean, for, from from a media point of view. Yeah, so I so like the fact that like, like Spain, for instance, made time crimes. Yeah. And a whole bunch yeah. of really, 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 really good movies. Like I went yeah, to the exactly. International Film Festival and saw some amazing indie films. Yeah. And a lot of them were in um, English. A couple of those that were really good. I saw one called Shoplifters uh, from Japan, which was fantastic. Um, and Angels Wear White. So, yeah. Sorry to suggest those two. Time Climb. Oh, and yeah. You would only watch Mandy, which was in the International Film Festival. I've got it. We yeah, need to watch Mandy. <laughs> yeah, we need to watch Mandy. Yeah, um, I completely agree with you, and mm. I apologize that um, our our lives, our reality is it's just far too busy. We're people, too busy, man. Yeah, people around their thirties. It's just like if I recommend if you're not in your thirties yet, um, and you're not up to that, just stop aging. Like, stop having <laughs> birthdays. Refuse. People are like, "Oh, you were born." In the- no, I wasn't. I was born three years after that. It's like, no, I have, your, I have your legal documentation that's right in front of me, sir. And you're like, no, I'm still 18. Sir, yeah. it clearly says yeah. you're 42. No, I'm still 18. Yeah. Don't ever grow yeah. up. Be like Peter Pan. Don't ever come back from Netherland. <laughs> um, never get a full-time job and trying to make something. With, oh, my God, I'm going in a circle. No, this is the entire problem with society. <laughs> the circle must be broken. Yeah, we're going to break the wheel, guys. Uh, we've got De Niro still on this one. No more slavery. <laughs> 
interesting thing fact about slavery uh, more white people have been slaves than any other uh any other any other race creed or city it is a fact uh, yeah, and something you so can look up the irish slavery ring um yeah. in the 1700s um would you really call i mean the, the jews are fairer skins than most middle eastern people yeah but there's actually not like to be brutally honest from the studies that have been conducted recently so this is not like this is not your ma and pa know about it like talking casually over lunch with your next door neighbors after church material <laughs> that was so specific <laughs> Um, there is no actual proof that anything related to the Hebrews being imprisoned in Egypt and helping build the pyramids was actually real. Like, there's no evidence that you could actually use slaves. And you could use slaves in, like, a way that you use slaves to, like, you know, go collect all those but rocks the, the, and pile the them over here. Egyptians definitely did deal in slavery, though. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Slaves existed. I'm not debating that. I'm just saying that the people who were in who were enslaved who, may not have been the well i suppose i mean if you look if you, you look can't at it, build at, something that complicated with just slave labor there would have been employed people yeah you, yeah you would have needed employed. I, I think the heavy lifting was definitely slave labor or they used um dinosaurs that were still left over oh don't it. give me that bullshit the <laughs> earth is not ten thousand years old. <laughs> Fucking, if you go in the comments and tell me the earth is ten thousand years old you get fucked like comment and subscribe first but fucking give up. And donate money so Harry Skelly can get a uh, graphics card. Oh my card. god, so Harry Skelly can please get a fucking graph. If you donate enough money to get him a graphics card. I will agree that the earth away. is flat. Yeah, uh, I will and also 10,000 years old and the pyramids yeah, and I, all of the rent. That's another yeah. weird thing is the fact that every civilization that reached that sort of era and that sort of time also built pyramids. Ancient aliens may be real. Let's yeah, watch well, because I mean, yeah, because Khufu started the Giza pyramids around the same time that the master bars were built in uh, south america so yeah what is with pyramids we really like pyramids like three is an interesting number we're getting fucking crazily tangential now (laughs) the segue is is on one wheel and is going down the wrong way (laughs) it's going the wrong fucking way so (laughs) three is an interesting number because like um you've got the three pyramids of giza pyramids themselves even though these are four-sided pyramids, pyramids use trigonometry, so yeah. three. Which we would have learned, uh, learned about a mass, but we left mass and went off and did other <laughs> stuff. I, I sure did. I sure did. Uh, <laughs> this doesn't interest me. I'm going to become an art student. Yeah. Well, guess what, kids? Don't do that. Stay in school, which, I mean, I still did, but learn math, all right? It's fucking boring, but learn it. Um, <laughs> I know I didn't give... There wasn't a hard sell, but fucking do it. Um... And then you've got uh, religion with the the Holy Trinity. Um, yeah. And then you've got, uh, what else have we got? Uh, it's just lots of threes, all right? <laughs> I can't remember everything that was related to the, Every letter, three. the letter okay. three, all right? Yeah, the color literally. three. All right, I'm not Elmo, okay? Today's magic number isn't the number three, but it's there, okay? Oh, yes. So bit strings, 256. That ship right there, divisible by three. Okay. <laughs> Pi is three, all right. And a whole bunch Pi, of other numbers. Yeah, exactly. But Several three is the is the is the main integer. Okay. Yeah. So three's there, guys. The truth is out there. Scully, Mulder, fucking when fucking the T one thousand was in the show. Three. Okay. <laughs> Done. The T one thousand. Rise of the machines. Two and yeah. three. Oh, half half, um, half life three. You know, confirmed. confirmed. Okay. We fucking did it. We did the meme. Um. Fucking, what is the name of the guy who plays the T-1000? Arnold Schwarzenegger? No, he was the 8,000. 8, oh, fuck. I don't remember. No, um, the... T-1000 was fucking... What's his name? Patrick Richard? No, hang on, hang on. Patrick, Patrick Richardson. To... <laughs> Richard Patrickson. Is it Richard Packers? What? No. Hang on, I'm on Wikipedia. Scrolling, I'm scrolling. <laughs> Linda Hamilton, guys. It was Linda Hamilton. It was Robert Patrick. No, is it Robert, Robert Patrick? There, there it is. I yeah. fucking knew Patrick was in the name. Yeah. He's funny, Bob. Um, but um, <laughs> fucking Patrick Robertson, Robert Patrickson, Robert Patrick. He was in fucking X Files. That's what I was trying to get at. Three, okay. The truth is out there. He got eaten by a Wendigo. I mean, the Wendigo head cannon. Yeah, Mulder <laughs> yeah. is um literally crazy, 
and that's why every episode starts off with them already in a place where something bad's happened and scully is his minder and the only reason he has a job in the whatever department of whatever agency that he works for because i can't remember because it was out years ago and i stopped watching it is because Mm. his dad is a smoking man it's a simple fact no fbi case starts off with having coffee in a friggin stop along a motorway into some random state into some small area of that state that is not how detective work is done it is done from i get a case passed from from my desk i look at the case i see the optability if it's not handled by me it'll be handled by a field person no that is not how it works every episode is the opposite of reality now so with that though the problem is it's robert patrick was in a season without him and they still did the crazy stuff yeah because what he was saying was real ah so okay so he's like deadpool no not like white the orange boxes actually exist but no one else but him can see them oh no is he like fucking um richard black from fucking uh millennium possibly um i love that show <laughs> it was lance patrick uh fucking lance hendrickson and i love lance hendrickson i i love him to pieces he's in red faction too by the way guys lance he actually signed my copy of aliens all right he wow, signed that's, my copy of that's pretty impressive bishop signed my fuck and i walked up to him and i was like you're the fucking man he's like thanks dude <laughs> and i was just like yeah um also pumpkin head was interesting he's like dude they suck all right <laughs> and i was like they did suck i'm so happy you're okay with that he's the man by the way lots of some totally fucking recommend meeting him he's a wonderful wonderful man but yeah so um <laughs> <laughs> that just tangent? that tangent was just yeah. incredible i was just like mm, i've got yeah. nothing to follow up on that <laughs> yeah yeah i'm sorry i'd like uh, yeah it's just yeah every time i think about the fact that i actually met bishop i just get giddy because fuck i love i love aliens that movie's amazing <laughs> I wonder if that story that everyone says is true is true about James Cameron walking in and just being like writing alien on the board and then writing an S on it and then putting a line through it so it made a dollar noise and just a dollar sound. Dollar. What the f- The dollar symbol? Dollar symbol. Thank you. Sound yeah. noise. Fucking Jesus. And right, just S, being, man. Yeah. And just being like standing there like uh, Tony Stark when his Jericho missiles explode. There, are, like, there are a number of accounts that confirm that he did that. So it's not just James Cameron. Like a number of people from that meeting were like, "That's what happened." God, I wish I had that kind of power. <laughs> well, the thing is, bro, is you know he wasn't established yet, right? Yeah, hundred percent. So when they were filming it, the first Terminator hadn't dropped, so he was like, "Hey, give me a chance," and they chucked him fuck all money to do it as well. And he went to England because then they filmed it where they filmed the first one, and the staff didn't like him. Uh, he really hadn't. They didn't like him because apparently he wasn't well it's because it wasn't established enough so like this young fuck comes along and tries to tell us what we do we work for pinewood studios bitch we made james bond and it's just like yeah i know but art it needs an artist and i'm an artist and unfortunately no one had seen his art yet fuck i'm glad that he just pushed through i'm glad he fired the two guys that were the ringleaders and fucking instigating hatred towards him he's like you two are fired because you'll fuck knuckles and i'm like oh he's like hey let's just make this movie and i hate all of you and you hate me and they're like oh okay because they're british they just carried on because they're like you know what he fucking gets it (laughs) wait a second what oh my god i did not realize that he'd made this movie who james cameron so i'm on james cameron's wikipedia page while you were tirading there (laughs) um terminator came out in 84 rambo came out in 85 aliens came out in 86 the year i was born yeah. he made strange days strange days is a movie i watched years and years ago mm. and it was one of the most weird and fucked up sub-reality science fictiony movie that you will ever see in your life it's got ralph mm. fines in it for you kids at home oh yeah and juliet yeah. lewis who probably should have done less drugs um i mean everyone should do less drugs Stay in school, kids. Unless you're a mumble rapper, then do all the drugs in OD. Oh, man, there's... fuck mumble rap. Mumble rappers can get fucked. That is an art, all right? Actual rappers, that is art. What you're doing, bitch. Lick my fucking dick. Yeah. 
Like, fuck you, man. You're yeah, the like, shit that I pretend rap is. Bro, they drink too much lean. It's not their problem. <laughs> they drink too... They, they drink a physical position a human being takes in a doorway. No, no, no. A lean is a drink that's <laughs> made from uh, lollies, cough syrup, and soda. It's purple Ooh. drink. It's purple drink. But it's, it's called lean. It's, an, it's a street drug now named lean. Um, I... <laughs> Yeah, I wouldn't recommend it. True Lies, another fantastic James Cameron oh, movie. Do you know what I love about the True Lies? The bridge is out. The bridge is out. The bridge is out. What I fucking love about True Lies is James Cameron was like, do you want to just make, make a turn off your brain movie? And they're like, yeah, okay. And then they did. Because like James Cameron is very much an artistic director. And he was just like, man, I just want to make a turn off your brain action movie. Let's do it. And the fact that he kills the bad guy by like, Hooking him up on the torpedo. <laughs> oh, sorry, the missile, sorry. Hooking him up on the missile and then firing the missile. What the fuck? <laughs> My favorite part is he turns to him and says, you're fired, and then <laughs> shoots him into another helicopter. And they all scream as he fl- has the dude on the missile. Not only, like, just standard physics that would not fly in a straight line, guys. <laughs> yeah, we're dead because of the added weight. Yeah, flies through a building. <laughs> And these terrorists in a helicopter on the other side who haven't seen the missile coming because they were outside of view. Outside of his view, Harry's view, the main character. Now that, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That comes Austrian through guy. and they all scream like a cartoon and then explode and fall <laughs> out of the sky. And then he saves his like underage daughter. Fucking, I love that movie. True Crimes. A true fucking Lies. Dwight- a true, true lies. Sorry, fucking true crime streets of LA, Xbox original. Um, but fucking true lies. Holy shit, that's a good movie. Cause like it's not supposed to be a good movie, and as a result, it's a good movie. Like <laughs> it was just a film. It had Jamie Lee Curtis in it, and I don't give a fuck what anyone says. I think Jamie Lee Curtis is hot. Um, watch a fish called Wanda if you disagree with me, and that will change your mind. <laughs> Let me tell you. Oh, there was an awake. There was an awakening for a young that random guy. <laughs> It was an awakening. When John Cleese reads poetry to her, you fucking shit put that shit on A B repeat, motherfucker. So anyway, all I wanted to say is Jamie Lee Curtis is on. It's a good movie. I like it. Jamie Lee Curtis is also a top tier Street Fighter player in Maine's Cami. That is a real fact about about Jamie Lee Curtis. She's one of the best Street Fighter players on it. Does that fuck with your head? Because <laughs> it fucks with mine. Um, I want to get bodied by fucking Jamie Lee Curtis and tell her. I can shit. <laughs> and I'll be like, oh, can shit. It's Jamie Lee Curtis. <laughs> it's fucking, that's amazing. So I was just reading about the Avatar sequels. The five of them. Well, if I wish I was literally making that up. says, let's face it, Avatar 2 and 3 don't make money, there's not going to be a 4 and 5. They're already filmed. <laughs> I'm not even lying. Can we, you can can we, se- that can we segue reverse? I don't know how you reverse in a segue. I guess lean. <laughs> we'll lean back, folks. We'll lean back. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking perfect. Um, as you mentioned before, there's very little actual f- f- actual photography that goes into those movies. Because it's yeah. this cartoon. With, like, it's people, a cartoon. With people walking in the background. Because it'll just be VA. Yeah. Actors walking around with dots on their face for VA. Do you know what you could do instead? Just hire Square Enix to make them. <laughs> They'll look more real. <laughs> Though more I really them. do enjoy... Cumberbun, Cumberbun. Oh my god, I'm doing what the internet did. Benedict Cumberbatch. Benedict Cumberbatch as Smog? Yeah. Yeah, he's his, fucking fantastic as His Smaug. motion capture video yeah, is, he's a, better, he's a true actor, is better than the actual dragon <laughs> in the movie. I'm throwing it out there. If you disagree, donate money so I know you disagree. So we can buy her <laughs> yeah, a fairly yeah. new... Yeah, our PayPal is legitimately at the top of the description. If you want to just fucking chuck some stream labs in there to to some struggling students how get harriet scally a fucking graphics card buy beef king sell at a house you know what i need money too for some reason <laughs> <laughs> I, fucking, I can't believe there are fucking cunts out there right they're like kajillion ears on the youtube channel they go guys i really need your help man if you could donate to our patreon smash that like button fuck my mom you would be really helping me out here like, you know, like, fucking, like, you're a kajillion ears. People know what to do. If they like your video, they'll like it. Let's face it, they're watching it on a phone, so they can't see the like button. They're probably not going to hit it. Mm. All right? And if they, if they want to subscribe, they'll subscribe. 
But you're sitting there, you're a cajillionaire. You got fucking money pouring out of your anus. All right. Sorry if you thought all you anus impaired pouring out of pores. You know, 100%. fucking. Just fuck you. I love it. There's a there's a guy I follow uh, called Fact Fiend on uh, YouTube. I love his channel. Love his stuff. I think he's just one of the most charismatic YouTubers. And they don't do the like, comment, subscribe thing. <laughs> they take the piss. He does like fucking like pretend cutaways, and he even has the camera angle. So it's like you know how the the a lot of vloggers they have the camera just above their head, so they're yeah. like slightly looking up. Yeah. He does he does it to the camera like that, and they cut back to their actual format of the show. It's fucking amazing. And it's on purpose, not seamless. Like, <laughs> it's fucking, it's so good. So yeah, guys, like, comment, subscribe, fuck, fucking, fuck my bum, whatever, you know. We could actually probably make a lot of money out of that. <laughs> it's just selling my bum online, put that on trade me. We could track that on ebay.co.uk. Yeah. No, <laughs> that no, random bum. Yeah. Noons of your bum. Yeah. You don't get to see them until you pay for it. Yeah, oh yeah, man. Like those Patreons. You want to see my titties click here? Yeah. Those are real Patreons, people. I'm not having a go. Like, if you want to make money that way, fucking do what you want. It's your body. But um, just think it's funny. Like, <laughs> like oh man, should I go the Pornhub route, the Chatterbait route, or Patreon? You know what, kids? Go with the Patreon, all right? You know what you're getting paid for then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Fucking. Now, for all you youngins out there, I was talking about dancing. <laughs> Uh, that's always a reference <laughs> yeah man we just a channel of references at this point to our own canon to our own canon. yeah to our own head canon <laughs> <laughs> holy shit we came for we finally did it guys we came full circle we fucking came full circle um fucking <laughs> okay any last thoughts yeah my head canon is um Doctor Who ended in 1989. <laughs> 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 ah, seven. Yeah, but what about Torchwood and the Tenth Doctor? Those, those were good. And some of Matt Smith's era, those were fine. They weren't. Yeah, great. the first half of Matt Smith's era is fantastic. And like three episodes of Christopher Eccleston. Yeah, but it's not like with Big Finish. I'm gonna plug Big Finish here, guys. Um, <clears throat> where they're just consistently they're good. I'm like, plugging big finish. Yeah, I know, I know. Just let him. He's already dead. <laughs> but, um, he's already dead. Uh, with uh, big finish, they just make cons- consistently good stories, and I'm just like, they had the rights to Doctor Who before it came back. Why weren't they the writers? So yeah, it's like fucking okay. I have to get this off my chest. I already did it in the Who Discussion podcast, but let's face it, nobody fucking cared about Who Discussion. So, they made the first Doctor a sexist homophobe. And if you watch classic Doctor Who, no, fuck you. If you watch classic Doctor Who, right, that is not who the first Doctor is. The first Doctor is very much an alien, and he thinks humans are below him, right? Which they are. He's basically a demigod. Yeah, he's essentially a demigod. But then he lightens up as it goes through, because he learns why humanity does the thing that they do. He understands to learn what compassion is, something that his people lack. Right, which is why when you meet the Time Lords and the Three Doctors and all the subsequent ones and throughout Classic Who, they're really up their own asses, assholes, right? But they're not fucking like homophobes. <laughs> they come from a planet where people can die and not have a penis anymore, magically have a vagina now, right? The last thing they're gonna be doing is going, man, let's be homophobic, because at some point the Doctor's mum was probably also his dad. He had two dads at some point, so the idea that the first Doctor would be homophobic. And the sexist makes no idea. No, no, it doesn't make any sense at all. And the thing that fucks me off is there's a character who was a bigot in the first Doctor's era, who was his companion, who actually featured in, twice upon a time, the character of Ben. The character of fucking Ben. Ben, played by Michael Craze, is a bit of a fucking douchey asshole. And they should have had him as the companion in the story if they needed somebody from the 1960s to be a bigot because that's not who the first doctor was it fucking frustrates me and then the very next season is all like oh old white men are evil it is true though no old white men are evil (laughs) it's just like it's so dumb it's so fucking dumb i hate it man like so for me it's big finish who also have significantly better well-written female leads just throwing that out there i suggest unit throwing that out there for all you guys the units books box sets are fantastic um they're having a massive sale over christmas hashtag we're not affiliated <laughs> we are not sponsored this is not a sponsored video 
but go listen to big finish because they are better than tv doctor who can ever fucking dream to be i'm gonna say it now i think it's better than classic who too i'm gonna get fucking reamed for that one but it's true i really liked torchwood because it was everything that i wanted in the series which was just i think season um, three was fantastic but you go back and you watch one and two and yeah it it doesn't hold up (laughs) it it just doesn't hold up children of earth by itself season three is so good standalone is it even a season or is it a mini series yeah but it's 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 listed as season three yeah i know but but i'm just saying yeah like because it's it's one it's one story it's one story the whole way through and that speech queen goes yeah it's fantastic yeah it's amazing where she's like the doctor won't be here sometimes because he turns away in shame and i'm just like fuck yes man yes it this pisses me off the most right so russell's era of doctor who i don't enjoy for you folks at home i'm rolling my eyes um not because you know it's just yeah (laughs) but what pisses me off is the last season of david tennant and torchwood season three are fucking good tv they are so good and i'm like russell why wasn't this the whole of your doctor who run because if it was oh my god how rewatchable those four seasons first four seasons would be it's actually so interesting that you um when when it changed from russell t davies over to stephen moffat how stephen had written some of the best episodes yeah of, from russell's era from russell's era and then when he yeah. took over everything just seemed really yeah <laughs> khaki <laughs> pants I'm going to go with khaki pants as my reference here. A uh, <laughs> few kids playing the Fano bingo at home, you'll you'll understand that reference. Um, <laughs> it's 100% khaki pants. Just like you're going to the yeah. petrol station and it's 11 o'clock at night and you don't <laughs> care who sees you because you're buying toilet paper and that's the reason you're in the petrol station at 11 o'clock. Right? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> An episode about like prejudice against things that aren't human and they're like, genetic clones like no i don't care an episode where it doesn't have them the doctor as a main fucking character and a story about a girl in a dvd collection is amazing yeah don't blink is one of the best episodes i've ever seen ever of any like filler non-related canon episode of an entire series and that stands out for a shit ton of series um yeah, it's phenomenal and it just it pissed me off it actually pissed me off <laughs> but steven just fell off the horse like the first half of matt smith's run is just solid it's solid right up and until then, the sirens get diarrhea. killed basically after that and yeah. it's like becomes this giant thing about river song and you're just like yeah oh man i don't care exactly oh, i don't care man Ah, oh, River, get fucked. Not Alice Kensington. I hate when people think that you're attacking the actress when you attack a character. No. It pisses me off. I'm not attacking Alice Kensington because the River and the Big Finish, yeah, I'm plugging Big Finish again, so fucking sue me. The way they write her in that is leagues and bounds better than fucking Steven's bullshit. The thing is, man, I reckon River would have worked way better if she was just in Silence in the Library. Which is also another like, really good episode, by the way. <clears throat> yeah. Hey, who turned out the lights? You I think that would have been a way better way to use her because then people are like man when does she meet the doctor yeah but no it was all like oh we keep we keep meeting each other but just out of the wrong time order and and blah 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 it's like and we're also this 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 random people's kid and the space head and blah blah and you know i don't care yeah i don't give a single fuck your writing isn't good enough to make those kinds of webs like yeah, it's not it's exactly. not good enough it doesn't work yeah this is another thing like i know i just fucking kind of shat on russell a bit there but he was way better at foreshadowing than steven was yeah the big wolf re- the bad wolf reveal is like th- that's a stroke of genius it's like well done fucking he will knock four times yeah bitch he knocks four times and the whole time you're like oh that's the master because his drum beat is like fucking you know holy yeah. shit and then it's it's wilf you know the thing that you never thought it would be is what it is yeah and it works because the doctor met donna and he usually doesn't re-meet people as he intends to and he keeps re-meeting her because he was destined to be killed by her granddad well well done well fucking done russell that's great his last run man fuck russell you could have made four 
fucking solid seasons of just good TV. You <laughs> bastard. How fucking dare you do that to me? You don't make one good season and go, that's it. That's my magnum opus. For like, some reason, I, love- I had you pitched up on like your couch. But just like <laughs> sitting on your feet and like leaning into the microphone, gripping with both hands and just like with a picture of him with his eyes that, scratched out, like you could have done it. I'm pretty much actually doing that. <laughs> it's so annoying because like that is it's quality. It was just good quality. For, like my favorite Christmas special is hands down the one where the doctor meets that guy who thinks he's the doctor. Oh, the one where, yeah, his brain's been fucked up by the Cylons. Yeah. Cylons? <laughs> no, so, shit. Uh, yeah, Cybermen. Cybermen. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, um, and, and I'm just like, crossover it, alert. Like, yeah. It's because the doctor's so happy that he's going to live because he got this prophecy, you're going to die. Yeah. And he sees this guy and he's like, oh, fuck yeah, I'd actually survive. This is awesome. Hey, which doctor are you? That's great. And then you see when he listens to his heartbeat and he's like, oh. <laughs> Uh, so then he goes back to being like i'm actually afraid i'm gonna die my favorite is he's like sonic screwdriver he's like it's not a sonic screwdriver and he taps it on a piece of wood and he's like see sonic and it's just like <laughs> <laughs> everything's yeah. a sonic screwdriver. oh man that last season fuck man it's like my, people probably don't know this but Tim's actually my least favorite doctor um and it's just because like he's such a cry baby a little just hard i can imagine the first doctor just fucking bib him slapping him like harden the fuck up but um that last season of his is so good i think to be honest i think it's the strongest in the whole of new who <laughs> and he's my least favorite doctor so that really says something about that final season okay if we, oh god we yep had, yeah, yeah we had a little bit of uh weird spot yeah, sorry there. no that would be my my uh power mode clicked on oh, okay sorry about that that's all right. Um, if you could have all the David Tennant characters fight each other, who do you think would win? The David. Oh, okay. So like, um, like the Purple Man versus the Doctor. And- yeah. Um. Uh. And and the Wizard. Don't remember he was he was the son of the the leader of the yeah. um. And he was um, also I think a performer. The Wizard in Fright Night. The Wizard. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see if um, Kilgrove's abilities work on. Um, well they work on, the on people's yeah they work on superpower beings yeah and magic's real in the mcu so yeah maybe Kilgrave would be the one no yeah Kilgrave would be the winner because um the doctor was taken over by the midnight entity yep that's a valid point yeah so Kilgrave's um has the magic voice of Kilgrave would work was it explained in the comments that it was a like a virus Hormone. Was it a hormone or was it a virus? And that's why that... No, um, it, is, it is a virus created by his hormones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was a... Yeah. Vo- and that's how Jessica stopped being able to listen to him is that the horrible things that he made her do basically yeah, gave I, her... See, a, in the comics, a, I don't remember that. So um, it, uh, have you ever read Alias? No, I, 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 read I was looking ago. into it. I was looking into it and I was going to buy a collective box set, but they were really yeah. expensive. And then I realized... Yeah, I had, fuck you. Um, that's another problem with New Zealand. You know the, um, the, the scene where um they have anal sex in the show yeah it's lifted directly from the comics yeah 100 percent. shot for shot it was funny because i watched um uh, i was watching a video about this guy talking about stuff that won't be in the netflix show before it came out <laughs> and he was like they won't do the anal sex scene and they did it and <laughs> his twitter blew up with like people like showing a picture of him in his youtube video saying that it wouldn't happen <laughs> He's like, come on, guys. Did like, did any of you think it would actually be in it? And they're like, to be fair, no. We didn't think the Angus Sing scene was going to be. In it. And I love that they did it shot for shot. But, and it works the same way that it does in the comics, except in the comics, you get a, in a monologue. Um, yeah. And the reason was is because she just wanted to forget. And she was just like, to forget, I want to have like uh, pain, basically. Yeah. And it's just like, wow. Like, mm-hmm. Fuck, man. Jessica Jones season one is fantastic. That is a really, really solid show. Season two yep exists <laughs> pretty much like the immortal iron fist oh fuck the immortal iron fist I'm like, iron fist man he it exists. pisses me off it pisses me off because like in the in the comics he's so charismatic danny rain is such a fucking loser they fucked it up it's their fault yeah 100 percent. it's their fault they fucked him up what i would have cancelled th- him in the season one what do you think of the marvel netflix shows being cancelled oh well disney are releasing their own streaming platform that's the reason doesn't he have their own stream platform coming out, uh, I think, quarter two next year? Yes. So I think they're just going to absorb it all in. 
and uh, and that will allow them to be in the Avengers because the guy who runs Netflix television is a fucking piece of shit. Yeah, uh, what's his name? Um, piece of shit guy. He also runs the comic book arm as well. So comic book piece of shit arm running guy who's actually a fucking huge piece of shit and is like I think he's immortal at this point because he's old as fuck but he's still running. And I'm just like just retire or die. That's right? a shout and out. As fuck to say. That's a shout out to every rich old white powered money guy who's still oh, he's alive. not even white bro so i'm gonna get in heaps of shit for that <laughs> can i have uh money rupert murdoch that'd be great so just whatever you find in your couch like just spare millions that have fallen out of your, into your couch <laughs> you just send them my way i can buy here at yeah. Skelly a um gpu r- r- gpu that'd be fantastic so um can uh anyway so rupert. the so the avengers 3 script originally was going to feature the netflix cast yeah they're actually going to be in it um and then disney like, they actually can't and the Russo brothers were like, why? Oh, we actually can't use the Netflix characters. But you own them. Yeah. And we can't use them. Yeah. Isn't that how fucked up that we are with IPs these days? Like, to yeah. be brutally honest, it's like, Fox pisses me off because they won't give up Firefly. Because they yeah. made so much money out of DVD sales. I, yeah. I know for a fact because I own four copies. I've yeah. got... I, yeah, I own it on DVD and Blu-ray. Correct. I, for both the show and the, the movie. movie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, the Blu-ray remaster of the show is great. Yeah, it's fantastic. The fact, like I was saying the other day, when uh, we were talking about Fallout uh, 76 fucking up, and, oh, yeah. and me game, coming yeah, up with a... 10. Yeah, me coming up with the hypothetical law that you can literally be put in jail for fucking with an IP... Yeah, like destroying, destroying the image of an IP. You can't, and to be brutally honest, we'll, we'll go through a list of sinners here. Um, George Lucas, huge sinner, uh, destroying his own IP. Uh, yeah, and like... Bethesda. Yeah. Um, Oblivion have literally come out with a trailer for a game, which is Fallout in Space, and it looks exactly oh, like... Fa- Obsidian. What did I say? Oblivion. Oblivion. Fuck. <laughs> Thanks, Todd. Um, up next on the Skyrim port to phone channel, <laughs> Skyrim. Yeah, Skyrim uh, on everything, all devices, every device is Skyrim. Have you ever had to stop playing Skyrim to go to your fridge? Well, guess what, guys? Now you can play Skyrim on your fridge. Ah! Ah! <laughs> Fuck you! I don't care. Like when it got ported to VR, that was it. That was it. Fantastic! You've done a good job. Stop now. Oh, now it's on Switch. <laughs> oh now we're gonna looking at it to put it on your phone why why we've already played it there is yeah. a finite amount of things you can do in that game stop it well thanks to modders now there isn't yeah there isn't but thing, if yeah. you can turn you dragons Oblivion? if you oh, can turn <laughs> fucking dragons into randy savage and fight with a lightsaber and master chief yeah. you know when the most subscribed mod for skyrim was more realistic horse vaginas like i don't care <laughs> I don't care. What the fuck is that a real mod? That is a real mod and is a real fact. At one point in time, that that was the most like sought after mod because it became it came out online that people had, like someone had made that and a whole bunch of people went to subscribe to it. <laughs> that point in time where they were going to charge people for mods. Oh, you remember bro, that I shit? I still can't believe they were going to do that. What the actual cunting fuck? It's how. Yeah, it just it just shows. It just honestly, it just shows. That everything is fucked. And there should be a yeah. hypothetical law that if you fuck with your own IP, you get to go to jail. Um, DC is another example. Everybody in con- control of their live action shit should take a sit down, watch some, any of the Justice League, e- either Justice Animated movies. Animated movies, especially is it War, where they all meet each other for the first time. They should have just yeah. fucking copy and pasted that shit. With real characters and real actors, sorry. I don't get why they just don't just do big budget animation. It would make them different to Marvel. Yeah, but they're trying to fight fire with less effective fire. (laughs) They're trying to fight fire with a single lighter. Yeah. That's what they're doing. There's a fucking town-wide 1666 fire going on. Yeah. They're like, fuck, can my match fight the 1666 London fire? And they're no. running head first into that motherfucker, and they're like, "Don't worry, guys, <laughs> it'll all work out. These yeah, brands worry, are profitable." Yeah, yeah, I'm just here's right. 
Um, fucking, the, they're the Yamcha of the movie industry. Warner Brothers is struggling, man. But they like, struggle um, because they keep putting money into shit that they sh- fucking shouldn't. Yeah. It's a simple when fact. Universal tried to reboot the Monsters universe. To yeah. be fair, Universal invented the shared universe. Yeah. They did actually invent it. But unfortunately, because somebody else perfected it. That, uh, I'm pretty sure all the... Uh, the Godzilla movies are a shared universe as well, but yeah. they happen after. What was the first? The, what the, was the first shit? Were the first shit? Um, was oh, this Wolfman versus Invisible Man? Hold on. <laughs> the Wolfman was bored because he couldn't find the Invisible Man, and the Invisible <laughs> yeah. Man decided, you know what? Angry. I'm not going to fight a werewolf. I'm just going <laughs> to hang out on this building and watch women sunbathe. Okay, so um, hold on. And because hold he on. wasn't able to wear clothes, he eventually died from exposure from being locked outside. <laughs> Fucking um, uh, Universal film series i hate universal it. classic monsters wow they've actually they've gone back and retroactively rebranded the universe That's so the universe sh- is now called the universal classic monsters phase <laughs> so here we are dark um, universe so. um d- what was it dark something uh can't the remember. dark universe is what here it is at uh, 1943 sorry frankenstein meets the wolfman oh, i was gonna say the Invisible Man would just be watching and jerking off if I remember yeah, Kevin Bacon. Just, it, it would be like so uninteresting. But yeah, so that was the first one. Um, and yeah, and then um, Japan did the second one, which was the Kaiju Cross Universe, which is awesome. Um, yeah. You got your Mothra. It, you got, yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, Man, Godzilla. the 50th anniversary of uh, Godzilla. Oh, no, was it the 50th or 40th? No, no, yeah, it was the 50th because the 60th was the 2014 one. So in the in the fiftieth Godzilla movie, this guy who was um, from the original Mothra, he goes, "It's Mothra," and he turns up, and they're like, somehow they've made it that the original Mothra movie is still canon. And I was like, "But it can't be, <laughs> <laughs> it can't be canon." <laughs> it's so man, it's crazy. Fucking God, I, I've watched too much Godzilla. By too much, I mean every single film that's ever come out about Godzilla, um, except for that new anime one. I've seen that one, but you didn't enjoy the new anime uh it seemed really forced oh right okay i kind of still want to give it a go yeah um, don't get me right. wrong like the anime side of it like the actual art style and everything about it, it's awesome but it just it seemed really forced to me it's like godzilla so it's not, is it's literally not like Shin godzilla then. yeah it's like the opposite it's of yeah, like Shin godzilla is amazing yeah this is like the opposite of like godzilla was hanging out in his backyard and humans came to fight him it's kind of that's how i would describe the netflix godzilla movies um to continue shitting on dc uh the Dude, one f- before we continue shitting on dc abbott and costello fought frankenstein in 1948 who won <laughs> why they're a comedy duo <laughs> what the fuck why is a comedy duo fighting frankenstein <laughs> Holy shit, who won how plot? Uh, <laughs> uh, chicken sister is now the monsters are dead. I don't fry us anymore. Was My nice. head cannon goes that uh, Wolfman what the heck? up was So the they mummy. just they stopped believing in Frankenstein and that's how they defeated him. But then Vincent Price as the invisible man appears. Oh that's too bad. I was hoping to get in on the excitement. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm the invisible man. But instead in this cool Vincent Price voice that I'd never be able to imitate. Yeah, no one can yeah vincent price was my favorite um one of my favorite audio renditions of a short story is um vincent price um and the beating heart yeah that's fantastically done yeah. another, another it, one yeah it's so amazing and i'm just like yep vincent price you were one of a fucking kind to segue back um, <laughs> yeah the, the last back, thing i need back. to do to shit on dc is mm. just to point out one thing. Yeah. You made this big deal about Flash and Arrow and Supergirl on CBD? No, C... Oh, CW. CW. Yeah. You don't even own the rights to it. So when the Flash came out for the... You just got a new actor. <laughs> the internet did not did not like that. It just... Stop. I like, why don't they share a universe like Marvel does? Yeah. Just stop shooting yourself in the feet. Yeah. You're trying to run a race, and the first thing you did when you started was nail yourself to the starting block, <laughs> and, and then fell on your face. And as Happy Tree Friends goes, you're usually your skin peels off, and you spend the rest of the episode screaming and crawling around along on your hands. <laughs> <laughs> 
Hey, wh- why does Happy Tree Friends exist? Probably because someone was like, hey, we should make a kids show. And they're like, yeah, that's a really good idea. And then the person the person who wrote it didn't actually consult with anybody except the animators. And when they originally, eventually got it, they were like, well, Frank needs some therapy. And um, if no one takes us, we're fucked. And but it was at the right <laughs> point in time where people were really interested in that shit. Because that was like, South Park was also a thing. Still is a thing. I think they just spend way too much time being super, is it neopolitical? When you shit on people, everybody, because of their existence. I, to be honest, I've never found South Park entertaining. Oh, I don't get me wrong; it's not entertaining because they just have their finger on the pulse. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, I don't know. I, well, just, I, I just think that they they rely like a lot of North American comedy heavily on just like poo jokes, and I don't know what America's fascination is with poo jokes. But um, if you guys could uh, comment in the the comment section why america loves poo jokes i'd really like to know why because it's fucking dumb yeah it's it's actually fucking dumb and if yeti had a um had his fucking playstation sorted out we'd just ask him and put his ring <laughs> yeah, yeah. Here, like hey like, yeti, yeti cola if you can fucking sort your shit out like, hey guys if you donate to us <laughs> the link in the description we can get yeti a controller for his ps4 we can get harry and skelly a gpu beef can get a house and i also want money <laughs> <laughs> fuck me oh well that's all the time we have for this uh week's episode folks uh it's been a pleasure and uh, pain Maybe the pain is in my body from playing so much mm. vr today um it's exactly. gonna be interesting and I'll, I'll speak to you in my results uh later when uh i turn from an obese white dude into a super black 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 guy in just six weeks well okay well um can i start calling you anadu and you can be my I missed that long. And before part. I get flayed in the fucking comments, yes, I am Maori. All right. Before that fucking happens, yes, well, I actually am Maori. Terrible internet connection actually censored what you're about to say. So, <laughs> well, there we go. It's now head cannon. Whatever you believe at home, folks. Of what he said. <laughs> oh my I'm god. Actually, Maori. All right. I'm gonna go. He said that um, he was actually Timur Morrison in that one movie. <laughs> fucking no, <laughs> definitely not. Am I not coming through now? Is that what just happened? No, but um, I have something <laughs> to mention after after we're done. So, um, mm, okay, we'll catch you next time. You sure will.